Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. I'm your host, Scott Wheeler. Today's guests are here to talk about a topic that many people don't like to talk about, but it's a topic that we really do need to talk about as a culture. Welcome to the show, and I'll let you to introduce yourselves. Hi, Scott. I'm Lynn Tangway from Breathe Fitness in Derby, Vermont. I'm a certified personal trainer and specialist in fitness nutrition. Hi, I'm Katherine Matheson. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I work here with Dr. Lockridge in Newport. Right. Well, uh, I'm really glad you wanted to come on, Lynn, because this was your idea. You really want to talk about suicide, suicide prevention, and how survivors can move forward, too. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how your life brought you here. Absolutely. Um, and it's something I've always wanted to talk about. So the last time you and I met, I was very excited that I got to mention this to you. And you let me, you, you said you had someone that I could totally do a show with and you suggested Kat. So that's what brought us here. But I um, have, what brought me to be a personal trainer is some, you know, chaos in my life and crisis. And so I had um, my wonderful father who was, um, died by suicide. So that was something that was really hard. It's been almost 18 years and pretty much spiraled my life out of control. So fitness is what really helped me get back there. I'm surprised by this. <laughs> That's okay. So um, I really wanted to share with others that there is hope dealing with crisis and your emotions and um, I was a train wreck and fitness is really what got me back on track okay Kat uh, what do you have to add to this about suicide and surviving it well like a I've used this metaphor before like putting a pebble in a, in a brook it just really resonates out and it affects so many people and what was your father's name Claude Claude and how old was he when he 54 54 um, I work with a lot of suicidal people a, a great many too many and there's different ways that you can approach dealing with it there's pills there's talk therapy something I really try to convince people to do is to move their bodies to start going for walks, to breathe, to, to not just depend on a pill. And the same thing for people who are impacted by it, by the death of a loved one. Just getting people to, because I think you feel so out of control, right? That this is happening. Very much so. And so for the survivor, I think it's a matter of somehow regaining some control and just getting centered and grounded and being able to process and deal with what happened. And it sounds like that's what you did. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> I want your card. <laughs> <laughs> but for a while you said that you just, you, you went in all the wrong directions. Uh, I was 24 and you, it was the first time I'd experienced um, total, I couldn't control anything. And I was so out of my realm. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, self medicated with alcohol and it was mostly alcohol abusing my body eating horrible partying all the time because I didn't want to deal with it I didn't want to deal with the reality then when it's it it never brought that it never brought him back all I was doing was making everyone else around me worried and and so on top of you know trying to deal with all the grief then you have me over here you know just who cares and and so I slowly started getting into fitness and that's where I was like, wow, this is what I can control. I can control what I lift, what I run, the races I can do. And by doing that, it really mentally helped me deal with the death of my dad. And, and it's not something I've I will ever get over. I don't think, you know, and people have told me in time, in time, and it's been almost 18 years and obviously I've learned to deal with it. And this is another stepping stone for me is to start talking about it and sharing and trying to, you know, let everyone know they're not alone. 
This is not something that's dirty and should be hidden and people shouldn't talk about it. It is so rampant. I, I just hear it all the time and I, I always feel so um, sorry for everyone involved and, and just hope they get the help that they need to heal some of those wounds. You know what I hear, because I've had other people on here who've been through the same journey, you well, a similar journey as yours, is, but what they said is, when everybody's talking about how they've lost loved ones and everything, and then somebody says to you, well, how did, how did your father die? When you say suicide, suddenly it's like, I don't, they don't think they really mean to be rude or something, but it's like, you, they don't know what to say. Do you find that? Um, absolutely. And I never, living in our small town, we've, I've never had to explain it. Everyone knows who I am. Everyone knows what happened to my dad because that's living in a small town. Mm -hmm. And I never had to tell anyone that until I moved away down south and I can remember clear as day with some new coworkers and they're like, oh, so what, what does your um, mom and dad do? And then I was just, and I'm like almost 30 years old at this point, and I've never had to tell anyone. I'm like, oh, well, my mom does this, and my, my dad died. And they were, oh, well, how did he die? And then I was just like, I, I, I didn't even really know what to say. And I'm like, I've never had to say that out loud. And so I, um, I try to talk about it as freely as I possibly can, and I don't ever mean to put it off on someone. But I think I, I like to share how I felt, what went on, what helped me become who I am and get through all of the grief and the, um, the guilt. I mean, there's such huge guilt. And, and just really work on becoming healthy physically and with the mind. Right. I know you were telling us before is you did question, I think everybody questions, uh, what could I have done? Did I miss something or did I not take it seriously? You and said you went through all that. We never had any signs. Um, obviously, my, my dad had bipolar, and so he was medicated when he would take it. And and that's a, that's a whole nother realm is when you have a 50-something-year-old man and he's saying, I'm fine, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with me, you can't force feed him medicine. So we tried to be as supportive as we could for him. So we never had, he never, we, there was not a sign. We, I never in a million years would have thought this was what my family would go through. But yeah, there was, um, the night before he died, he had wanted us all to, to get together and trim the tree because it was three days before Christmas. And I decided to party with my friends and I blew it off. So that to me was something I dealt with for a long time. And then I just, you got to forgive yourself, and, and I've tried the best to understand why. You'll never understand why. I think a lot of people, what I hear from the people that I see is the people who really do it without saying anything. The statistics, are, it's like one-third of people you never know. They don't say anything. And there is that guilt, like, what could I have done? Um, there's people who go around saying, oh, I'm gonna kill myself, I'm gonna kill myself, I'm gonna kill myself. Actually, I worry more about the people who don't say anything or who's, you know, a man's wife will call and be like, oh my God, this is what's happening. It's the people who are very quiet and silent about it because they're the ones I think who really have the plan and the intent and that's actually pretty typical, I think, what your dad did trying to get everybody together giving away possession some of the signs I can just all briefly mm -hmm. say giving away things increased use of alcohol and drugs um, looking I've had people who are like you know their spouse will catch them looking online for ways to kill themselves um, uh, visiting calling people to say goodbye things like that those but if you're not aware of those things you just oh you know can gloss over them but it's the ones that you know we're closest to that that you see the signs. If that makes any sense. And there's a there's a old wives' tale that there's more suicides around the holidays. Mm -hmm. I actually did some research. It's less in December 
but it sounds like not for your dad. No. And it kind of spikes in the spring, and so many bipolar people are suicidal, and it's the nature of their illness. And then they're self-medicating, and that's a pretty lethal thing too. If someone's feeling suicidal and then gets very drunk or takes pills, they lose their inhibition, and that's when it happens a lot. See, I would have thought that suicide spiked in the, the winter months because of just even myself, you know, you just, you know, a relatively healthy human being just trying to make it through to spring. You know, you get, you get to the end of February, you start seeing a ray of hope. But, uh, you know, if somebody with uh, severe depression, I would think the winter months would be tough. Well, that's when people don't have the energy to do it. Hmm. That's they're just so depressed they don't have the energy and then when the when their mood starts improving a little bit that's when they actually get the energy to to right. do it. So uh, I think what you're doing, Lynn, is great. I've told that's my other people who've been on here before. I had I had one family on here who wanted to come on not days but maybe only weeks following the death of their loved one including the mother and they just wanted to get the the word out it was the Shaput family and they'd be they've been on here so they wouldn't they wouldn't mind and they they too did a great service by coming uh, uh, basically out of the dark to say this is and I, I think I think you I think you people who've been through this actually save lives and I think you being here today, you will save somebody's life, because uh, the fact is, is nobody, nobody wants, nobody wants to talk about it. And I think, I think it's begun to be the change a little bit, hasn't it? Yes. Yep. Because it's not like we were talking earlier, but you know, back in the days, oh boy. And if someone did, um, I keep wanting to say commit suicide, but right, death by suicide then it'd be like, oh, they had a heart attack, or oh, you know, it doesn't say in the obituaries, for example, right? Absolutely. You know. Like, it's tab it was so taboo, and I, it just, and I think that's where, you know, the helplessness comes from. People not feeling, they, they, they can say, I'm feeling this way, or mm -hmm. this is what's wrong, or, or just reaching that hand out for help. I mean, I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. And so if we can make it more, um, open, an open conversation where people don't have to be um, embarrassed or or wonder if people are going to be. That's that person over there. That's they have in labels, labeling people. It just diminishes their self esteem, and I think and it just needs to be open and and able to talk and people to know there are there are people that can help or at least reach out to. That's how come I. Uh, that's how come I wanted to connect you with Cat because, I said, I said she's really she knows what she's doing, but she's really cool too. <laughs> and and I can imagine if if I can imagine you're an outstanding counselor because, I, you know I think I think there's a lot of great counselors, but there's other people, who you know. Um, I think probably don't have your abilities. You know what I do? And it's similar to what you do. I listen to people and I let them get that energy out that's just boiling up inside them. Similar to what you do, I think. You know, we get that anxiety and that tension and all that negative emotion and moving your body, exercising right, kind of releases it. And yeah, then you can be clear-minded and you can focus and you can really think about what's going on. So I, I mean, in school I learned this therapy and that, but I just listen to people, and I'm actually really not happy, but when people can cry or share their feeling, that's good because it's coming out, and it's not just in here, so. You know, uh, I know this is probably a little off the topic, uh, but you tell me if this is similar, is one of my guests on my radio show, she's, she's a, uh, she survived Elswich, the death camp during World War II. She lost her entire family except for her twin sister. They were kept as uh, they were kept as experiment to be experimented on by Dr. Mangler, and uh, she uh, she's made a whole career out of forgiving 
forgiven, whether it's forgiven yourself, forgiven. And it, it, it doesn't mean forgetting, she said. And, and she said that sometimes uh, people are just, they're too hard on themselves. And you, you've just got to, you know, as she said, there's no such thing as forgive and forget. Because mm -hmm. she said, you're not going to forget. But, uh, but that's the way she survived. Her, you know, losing her entire family without going totally insane. I mean, people are hard on themselves, right? Extremely. You know, about their bodies or their... The, and, and that's one thing I try to work in is um, physically becoming strong and, and taking control will then lead to emotional control. And so I watch people come in and, oh, my butt's too big or I need to lose <laughs> this or I need to lose that. And I... And it just amazes me how critical they are. And I'm like, and what do you like about yourself? And they're like, uh, or after a period of time, we've worked months and they have, you know, amazing, their backs coming in with all this muscle or their legs are toning up and they're still, well, now I need to work on this and I need to work on this. And I'm like, have you seen your back? No. And I'm like, you need to go home and check that out. <laughs> you know, why are you always, we're always so hard and we never look at what we have done. It's always looking at what we need to do. And again, the, the healthy mind, mm -hmm. it's healthy body, healthy mind, healthy soul. I think it's all needs to be combined to be a whole happy person. So I, I've watched you uh, through your work is so you've taken it and you really do help a lot of people. And so you're, you know, you're taking, you know, you're taking a terrible chapter of your life and using it to help other people too. In it's 18, almost 18 years of me wanting to finally have a, a voice. I've always wanted to be an advocate or somehow get involved. And then it's that self doubt in me, like, oh, you, what would you have to say? Why would anyone listen to what you had to say? Or why do they care about your experience? And and it's as you said forgive mm -hmm. you know it's it's at that point where i have forgiven myself and now it's time to step in and step up and speak up as i said i i think what you're doing is just so good because there needs to be more i don't blame people for not coming on but you know i think i think you really do a do, do you think more people you know with somebody like her coming on don't you think it's really good yeah and this might be a little aside but just I think that y you help probably more people than you know with depression and anxiety in doing what you do I'm, I think I mentioned it that's what I try to get people to do it's like go get in touch with your body and breathe and all these things that can help depression and anxiety. So I'm going to start referring people to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it will, and being a trainer, when I went to school and, and all my studies and, and what I wanted to do, I never understood how, how much um, spiritually and mentally, it's not about just getting the body into shape. Like when I decided this is what I was going to do, I really felt that just working on people's bodies and their diet was what it was all about. It's all, um, there's a lot of emotions. There's reasons why people are overweight. There's reasons why people are stuck where they are. There's reasons why, um, you know, the self-doubt, the self-talk, the low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And it plays even more so once they can, they know they're in charge and they can take control and they can have a different mindset. It's, it's a pat and I'm watching these, these women and they've just, they've blown me away and they've made me even um, more aware and a better trainer and a better listener. Mm -hmm. And, and so it was kind of like, you know, all of a sudden the light bulb went off and I'm like, this is so much more to do than just the physical part. And, but Kat, you probably run into some people who, you probably run into a lot of people that want an easy way out of mm -hmm. depression because you can, you, they can take a pill and probably feel somewhat better. But do pills work entirely? No, I, I don't believe so. I mean, I'm a prescriber and I'm not a big fan of meds. I mm -hmm. probably shouldn't say that in public, but um, some antidepressants make people more suicidal. You know, there's the warnings on all of them. Um, some don't work. Um, just as an aside, we're doing this thing where I can get a little DNA sample from somebody 
and we send it to a lab and it get this big report back about all the meds that would be suitable for that particular person's DNA. Um, and what I've been finding, and all the pharmacies think I'm insane, but so many people are walking around their whole lives not making enough folate in their heads. You know, like when you take pregnancy vitamins mm -hmm. for the, you take folate for the baby's yes. brain. So all these people are walking around totally folate deficient, and you know what that causes? Depression and anxiety. So I've been putting people on this, uh, it's called a medical food, it's not even a drug. It's called L-methylfolate, and people are coming in my office and they're like, I feel good. I feel the H word, happy, which you don't hear a lot in my office. So that's just one example of how a non-drug is helping people because these drugs have so many side effects and make people feel worse and okay you're not going to be so depressed but you're going to gain a hundred pounds and lose all interest in sex okay there you go you know what I mean I totally know what you mean so it's pretty tricky business with these meds but there are some kinds of illnesses that do require oh yeah drugs. I used to work in the state hospital and there's you know if you're of harm to yourself or others. I mean, I do believe that some people need medication, but I believe the majority probably don't if they could find alternative methods to deal with it. And I'm not making little of depression because it is a very biological thing. But if you know you're getting oxygen in your brain and you're taking the right things that your body needs, like the folate, working with your body, not just putting stuff in that could be harming it more. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Or band-aids. Yeah. Or band -aids. Yep. You know, I think that's the uh, the great thing about uh, you working with Dr. Lockridge is because he's a medical doctor and he's also an oncologist, mm -hmm. uh, but your world and his world often kind of like overlaps oh, and I think it's so great that he has you there because I'm sure he, he probably even has people who think they have a physical issue when they go to see him mm -hmm. and then after you know he talks to them he's like well let's have you talk to yeah oh yes we refer back and forth all the time and it's you know it's so good to work with him and it's pretty rare I think to have that combination so we're really lucky no that, that is um, so are you involved in the uh, they have the walk every year the suicide walk, the suicide awareness walk. I think it's coming up. It's in September. I don't know the exact dates, but there's a walk. I'm definitely going. And then there's a dinner, I believe, the night before right. at the country club. Right. Um, and I can get you the information. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, for you, um, if, somebody, if somebody wants to talk to you, uh, wants any information, how do they contact you? They call the office and just schedule. And the office number is? Three three four seven one seven seven. Right, and how about if somebody you know wants to talk to you? Because you know what is, um, with you, you've actually, you've walked through these. You know, you've been there. You've done this. If somebody wants to talk to you, can they contact you? Oh, absolutely. And how would they contact you? They can contact me through my website. My email address is breathefitnessvt at gmail.com. They can Facebook me through a private message, or um, they can call me at 323-9823. Right. Do you find that sometimes just talking then? Do you, do you have people in your life that you just talk to when you need to? You know about this um i'm pretty much an open book so uh, stuff comes out of my mouth all the what time. about your what about you know not not to divulge too much about your siblings but you know with your siblings are, do they um my mom is pretty the one i talk to the oh. most and um unfortunately i have a brother that isn't he doesn't live here he lives in a foreign country so when we do get together you know we've had some discussions and um my other two siblings, um, we're all pretty open about it. Um, and that was one of the other things we were just talking about this year. We've all, um, we have some amazing stories about my dad. And and there was, um, a, I was letting my mom know, like the one thing my dad in, told me, and it's always stuck with me, is you're, you're the only one in charge of your happiness. That's no one else's responsibility but your own. So I was telling my mom about it, and she's like, I never knew he said that to you. So I was like, really? That's what I've lived by. Like, that is what's always in my mind. And so 
my sister and I started talking and there's so many stories we don't know. So this year we've decided as a family that on Thanksgiving we're picking a name and that one person has to um, get some pictures together and at Christmas time they'll tell us a story about my dad. Mm -hmm. Something some whatever it happens to be it doesn't matter what it is is if they think it's is something that they remember about my dad with like some pictures and we now have we all have children that don't they they didn't know my dad and it's one of those ways to keep his his legacy going there's there's it's almost like we don't want to talk about it because we don't want to upset everyone but at the same time we're doing such a disservice if he's not discussed so as a family, that's what we've decided to do. So all of the grandkids, you know, my son and the nieces and nephews, they can all hear stories about what a wonderful person he was. That's it's, really cool. And that's the kind of the sad part about it is the way our society looks at it is you, you have to actually, you know, it, it seems harder for you to be able to celebrate him, especially in past years. Like, Whereas like in two years, in the last two years, I've lost my father-in-law and my mother. We don't, you know, they died, well, different causes, but it wasn't by suicide. So where society allows us to celebrate them, whereas I think it's been harder for you to be, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And, and for, for, for our family, right. you know, I think uh, as we've all dealt with it in different ways we've all grown in different ways we've all dealt with it in different ways and so i know i'm always safe with my mom and i know i can always talk about whatever i want whereas with everyone gets together it it's maybe not something they want to talk about or bring up or mm -hmm. remember and and so it's always trying to be i also want to be um I don't I don't want to put things on others when they're not comfortable with it so it's kind of being respectful of them also but so I know when I can share and this is a whole new thing for my family and I'm really excited about Christmas and it's and fine. seeing the stories that are gonna come out because it's it's time to just really start embracing and sharing and remembering instead of us all separately having our thoughts and our feelings and our memories and probably the first few years when you were together it was, it was probably like an uncomfortable uncomfortable silence yeah. now what did they did you talk to any of them before when did you tell any of them that you're going to be here today i talked to my mom and what did she say because <laughs> i wanted to make sure it was okay i mean it, it's still you know our family business so before i started just talking openly about it i wanted to make sure she was okay with that and she was like absolutely whatever you know you want to talk about and you want to you want to go and help people and she she's right there behind me she right. always is i just want to say that it's really great that you're doing that because you're honoring his life Absolutely. And that's the thing. I think people get so caught up on what happened or why it happened or how we could have changed it or that you forget um, he was such an amazing person. So why are we not celebrating that instead of remembering that one horrible instant in his life or in our lives? You know, we had I had the most amazing child. I, I you know, I had 24 years with this amazing person. So I want to celebrate that instead of being so sad that he's gone. I think that's very wonderful that you're doing that. Right. Okay, we only have a few more minutes left. And uh, Lynn, uh, what more would you know you like to say about this topic? Just for people to know they're not alone. And if they need help, there's people there to help them. And to start taking little steps of taking control of themselves of helping themselves. If it's starting to just eat a little better, maybe trying to get more sleep or just going for a walk. Um, I love the fact I have an amazing dog and I think <laughs> dogs, dogs are just, I, you know, you're never alone. You always have that companionship and dogs love to be walked. So um, I always think it's great. I think everyone should have a dog because it'll get them out exercising. I just, they're not, they're not as alone as they think they are. Okay, Kat. Just to go along with what you're saying, I think when people are in that darkness, they don't see a way out. And just to try to tell people, this is not forever, there's hope that you're not gonna feel this way, you know, this can change. And it, and I think people, if they haven't been exercising or they're, 
there, even five minutes of a walk can help their mood or one, just one small thing at a time. You know, you don't if have to start running a marathon, then you know what I mean? Right. And just helping people understand that just one little thing at a time and it's not gonna be this way forever. I mean, no one wants who says, oh, I wanna be depressed, you know, or no one wants that. And it is out of people's control, but just helping people with meds if necessary, but just what you've been talking about and having them realize that, that they already are a good person. I'll just end with this. In Buddhism, there's this term, it's called uh, basic goodness, and it's this philosophy that everybody is a good person and that over time things kind of get layered on top of us, but just helping people realize you are good right now. You're not a bad person, and let's just build from that. So, does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> well, all right. I want to thank both of you for coming on, and thank especially, you, sir. And especially yeah. Lynn, because, you know, for you to open up, as I said, uh, you know, the term hero is way overused, but I think, uh, I think you being here today, you will have saved somebody's life. I hope so. I, I think I there's not much of a doubt about it, and I think Kat will probably agree that there's a good I chance agree. that somebody's going to be listening to you. Well, it's, it's a chance for me to pay it forward and to uh, everyone has a, they should have a divine life. Everyone should be happy. Everybody should be healthy. And um, that's, that's what I was able to do. And that's what I want to do is pay that forward. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks again <laughs> thanks, for coming Scott. on. <laughs> and thank you to the viewers for tuning in to another segment of the Northeast Kingdom Voice. Mm -hmm.